Before we get started, I want to make very clear the dangers of this experiment. Chromium 3 chloride is toxic, corrosive, and an environmental hazard. Acetoacetone is toxic and flammable. This goes without saying, but PPE should be worn at all times, and this reaction should be done nowhere near an open flame and should be done in a well ventilated area to prevent any fumes from building up and becoming a fire hazard. Any waste we produce during this experiment should be disposed of safely. Alright, with that little safety warning out of the way, let's get started. So in today's video, we're going to be making chromium-3 acetoacetonate. One of my favorite compounds that I've ever made. It's a pretty maroon or slash purple compound. It's really easy to make. I only need three things. It just takes a little time. So, first thing you're going to need is 2.8 grams of chromium-3 chloride. You can see it here. It's a nice green powder. It's relatively easy to get. I got mine on eBay. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is 20 grams of urea. I got this from not boiling my own piss. I got it from my school, but you can easily get it from instant cold packs. Uh, here you can see I have it in these nice pearls. Uh, powder would work just fine as well. And the next thing, and probably the most exotic thing you're going to need, is 6 milliliters of acetyl acetone. I got mine from eBay, but this, the, the guy I bought it from is not no longer selling it. Alright, first things first, we're going to want to add 100 milliliters of distilled water to a 250 milliliter Meyer flask. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add 2.8 grams of the chromium-3 chloride to the distilled water. <laughs> you can see I fuck up a little bit and pour a lot of it on the neck of the flask. I wash it down with a pipette. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add 20 grams of urea in 3 to 4 portions uh, over the next 10 minutes. After that, we heat the solution to around 80 to 90 C. We have to let it stay at 80 to 90 C for the next 90 minutes. And here you can see I finish by adding my 6 milliliters of AAC, uh, acetoacetone, and that finishes this step. Next, now I cover it with a little bit of parafilm and we wait 90 minutes. Alright, now that I talked about what you need to perform this reaction and how to do it, I want to talk on what's actually going on in the reaction because it seems like a lot of people want to learn about that kind of stuff. So, first thing that needs to happen is the acetoacetone needs to get deprotonated. The reason why we have to do this is because the acetoacetone can't really coordinate unless it is deprotonated, and that's what we're doing here. We're coordinating the acetoacetone to the chromium-3 ions. So, to do that, we're first going to hydrolyze the urea in solution using heat to produce ammonia and CO2 gas. The CO2 just bubbles off and kind of just does nothing in the reaction, but the ammonia is what we is a base and will deprotonate the acetoacetone, which allows it to coordinate to the chromium-3 ions in solution. The excess ammonia that's produced in the reaction then goes on to bind to the chloride ions in solution, which gives us our two major products, which is chromium-3 acetoacetonate and ammonium chloride. It's about a day later after the reaction. I filtered it and then dried it. By the way, the way I dry my products is I take the filter paper and put it on a few layers of paper towel and just wait a few hours. But I void the product and I we have about one gram here. It's a very nice kind of fine powder. There are small crystals that make it glisten in bright light. It's a very nice maroon color. The paper describes it as purple, but as you can see from both this sample and my others, this one's a lot easier to see. It is slightly purple, but I'd describe it as more of a maroon, honestly. But that one gram corresponds to a yield of around 18 to 18%, which isn't too good for this process. And we really should be looking for more of a, well, maybe about 50% yield. But that poor yield can be attributed to my terrible temperature control and I'm sure if you had a, be a better setup like maybe even a water bath you might be able to get this to around to closer to like two or three grams but either way I'm happy with this as fairly simple reaction so doesn't really matter to me hope you guys enjoyed the video I'll see you guys in the next one see ya